Off a Jokic post kick out, Pope's triple extends a near the end of the second nugget advantage to double figures. Ant's attempt to split this pick and roll displays Joker's underrated defense as Gru toys with MJ 2.0 like his minions to knock loose the steel and gather with 99 overall hands. The horse racer then all in one motion weaves a floater outlet to Porter who flushes a two-hander we couldn't bet against but the moment that went as hard as I've ever seen hadn't even taken place yet. Beating the clock, Cordland, that's intercepted. Murray, good as it goes! Oh! Got it! Got it! Oh! A big time three! Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, what a shot! A once in a lifetime eight points recorded in under 22 seconds ended up being the difference when things were all said and done. Having found a rare wavelength within both their 15 man roster on an internal basis and in 90s dynasty style pop culture as a whole, the Denver Nuggets have gone from villain to hero from both a short and long term POV. The Mile High seemed at sea level after faltering two L's in the Rockies to start a finals type competitive series. After the opposing T Wolves got all the hype while Denver was written off, as the great Hova once said, Allow me to reintroduce myself. The defending champs not merely sought out, but envisioned to do precisely that, and it happened for them. To hype up an NBA locker room, no one does it better than the son of veteran head coach who won back-to-back -back titles as an assistant, Brendan Malone, Michael Malone, who lives and breathes this business. I jokingly said Mike could use a blunt after his team went down 0-2. Flashback. Opposing coach Mike Malone would put it bluntly and could probably use a blunt. See, I did say that. Mm -hmm. Very clever. <laughs> okay. Seemingly accepting your boy D-Flo's satirical advice, Coach Malone got creative with his response to the world dismissing his team, going full Adobe Premiere mode on us. And you're always testing and finding out about human nature and what guys are made of. And when your backs are against the wall. I had an edit made. And I wasn't sure if I was going to show it to the guys, and I showed it to DeAndre Jordan, and he said, oh, hell yeah, we got to show it to the guys. It, it was a two-minute edit of every talking head in this country saying that the series is over, the Nuggets are done, it's a wrap, they're toast, Minnesota's a better team. All the big personalities, and you know who they are. Not that they were wrong, I, this is not a shot at those people, because after the first two games, I probably would have said the same thing. But I didn't want to show it because well, most of the time, I don't give a damn what they say. But I knew that this would maybe strike a chord. You know, it, deep inside you to say, hey man, like everybody and their brother is saying you're out, you're done. You guys can't play with this team, they're better than you. If that doesn't resonate within you as a competitor, I don't know what will. And so yes, our guys answered the bell and they showed me that they still believe. That was my biggest question. Do you believe getting on that plane on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock? Are you going to believe that we can go up there and win two games? What the Denver Nuggets are trying to accomplish here is almost unheard of from a historical perspective. Only five teams in league history have lost the first two games at home in a series and come back to win it. The 1969 Los Angeles Lakers, the 1994 Houston Rockets, the 2005 Dallas Mavericks, the 2017 Boston Celtics, and the 2021 Los Angeles Clippers. That's it. But Jamal Murray wasn't phased by the challenge even when initially being faced with it. The Blue Arrow would say after nodding it up at two, quote unquote, we're the champs, we've been in this position before. The amount of mental toughness that it takes to be a top dog in this business, both on and off the court, that's crucial for any juggernaut to be in control of. Denver's two top players in Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray are showing they have a different volume of, which separates them from the pack. The Denver Nuggets' two best players faced scrutiny and pressure to say the least following losing two in Denver at Ball Arena, after Jamal Murray quite literally threw in the towel in Game 1, with fans across the globe calling for a suspension instead of the 100k fine, the Ontario Canadian bred assassin used the haters as fuel to his fire. This showed us why Jamal is one of the greatest pure playoff performers of this generation. Blue Arrow went from villain to hero overnight, symbolizing how the Nuggets have done the same from last year in comparison to this year. With ethical, unselfish, and high IQ hoops, Denver has catapulted into North America's team. However, like Murray, Jokic has also faced a ton of hate. 
after Jokic and the Nuggets lost the first two games of the West Semis at home to Minnesota, while Nikola was awarded his third regular season MVP a few days later. Maybe it was the fact that Joker was down 0-2 at the time, but not even recency bias is an excuse for how Shaquille O'Neal disrespected Jokic practically face-to-face -face in what was supposed to be a celebratory moment for an award that's supposed to mean a lot. Shaq would state that SGA was robbed. Not just once, O'Neal would state this, but twice. I don't like to rain on people's parade. Twelve seconds later. I felt Shea Alexander deserved it. A little longer than a few minutes later. But I want you to hear from me first. I thought that SGA should have been the MVP. That's no disrespect to you. Joker would joke in an awkward moment that showed humility by stating back to Shaq. There is a lot of people that, a lot of players that deserve it, you know. For Shaq, instead of recognizing a fellow big man's achievement, he came off as salty, especially considering Nikola has now tripled the big Aristotle in league MVPs. The Nuggets collectively have also been disrespected lately. This viral post on X after Denver went down 0-2 to Soda states Denver won the fakest ring ever last year, whatever that means. While they do have many narratives to prove wrong, the Nuggets are trying to show us they can win when either the narrative's in their favor or against them. Last year, your boy D Flo was a Laker channel, and the purple and gold were the mainstream media's main plotline. Therefore, the Nuggets were potentially able to use a rival getting way more respect than them as motivation. With Denver turning into this channel's main team and getting more respect from the mainstream in comparison to last year in the playoffs, the Nuggets now have to flow with the narrative as opposed to trying to carve their own. The Jordan Pippen America's team approach is the one Denver must adopt if they want to repeat and a dynasty. I'm not worried whatsoever about Mike Malone and his terrific coaching staff's ability to motivate their troops, but finding the mental edge to repeat as champions, let alone win two chips in three, four, or five years, has yet to have been figured out by the last five NBA title winners. The Nuggets maintaining unpredictability both strategically and mentally will be the formula, key, whatever you want to call it, to locating the quote-unquote repeat as champs mindset that's been elusive to every single title winner over the last half decade. If the Nuggets don't win a championship, it'll be the first time in NBA history that six different teams have won the title over the span of six years. So whose decade is it really? D Flo's? Second year professional and Bill Self product of Kansas University Christian Brown is in the midst of Denver's quest to go back to back looking for his third straight basketball championship between the NBA and NCAA. The key to Christian's success in Denver's system has been his chemistry with Jokic and Murray. His ability to play off the ball meshes with Nikola and Jamal's playstyles, while his non-envious up-and-coming aura has always motivated Kola and Maul from an internal competition standpoint. That's been the case ever since CB was stolen by GM Calvin Booth with 2022's 21st overall selection. What a robbery Christian was that late in the draft, by the way. Savvy front office steals have been a theme in this Nuggets organization's path to success. Who knows what the Orlando Magic will do with their protected first round pick from Denver in 2025, but given that franchise has gotten to a point where they're trying to contend, maybe the Magic should have just kept Aaron. That's a lesson for rebuilding teams. Hang on to a veteran or two. You'll need them when your assets blossom. In hindsight, it's clear then Nuggets GM Tim Connolly dealing Gary Harris and RJ Hampton, in addition to that aforementioned first round pick to receive Aaron Gordon, was a generational trade robbery. Connolly left for Minnesota a year before Denver won the championship, so he never got a ring. But Tim is responsible for a lot of the Nuggets core being there. The Nuggets Wolves NBA Finals S Western Conference Semifinals matchup in 2024 started out with the feel of a revenge saga. How Denver responded has made this series feel like the 2023 matchup the Nuggets and Timberwolves had in the opening round last year, which Denver won in five. What's the most under talked about storyline about the 2024 Denver Nuggets, in your opinion? Today's commenter shoutout goes to Boston Holtane, who says this is the Mavericks series to lose. Despite being hindered by injuries, the Mavericks have found their stride in the last two games. 
What's really impressed me is Kyrie's ability to impact every part of the offense. When his shot isn't falling, he's looking to create great opportunities for his teammates and move off the ball to draw his defender. P.J. Washington has been incredible in this series, and D.J.J. has been an important part of Dallas's great defense on the Thunder. Mavs in 6. For a chance at free merch of your choosing by being in the shoutout giveaway top 5, leave your take on today's question down below in the comments section.